Hello guys, this is Mark again, and we're starting with, with the real fun. We're uh, learning a technique to compress the kick drum, which is going to be very useful for uh, many styles and situations. Well, the very first thing we have to do is to uh, do the initial setup. So here I have a virtual compressor. It's uh, an emulation from uh, Studio VCA. Uh, we have more options here in this software, but let's keep this to the VCA, it, it will work. So, the first thing we have to do is to set our threshold always to the top. You know, it's around 0 dB, the, the highest point. That it means that we won't be able to compress almost anything. So, the second uh, point to consider here is the ratio. We have to, to set uh, ratio around 3 to 1, something like that, maybe 3, 4 to 1, it's a medium th uh, ratio, which is okay. Uh, the next part is our makeup gain or output gain in some compressors. Uh, this has to be around 0 dB, so this is initial setup. Actually, this works almost for any kind of compression, for any instrument, So, but we are dealing with our kick drum. Then uh, the attack. The attack and release controls, well, we, we are going to set this around the middle, which is going to be a medium attack and medium release. That's good to get started. Now, let's, uh, let's hear our kick drum. All right, then we have our kick drum and the, the next thing we have to do is to start lowering our ratio to start our compression. We want to compress the peaks. And I'm going to turn my compressor on. There we go. We, here we have more compression, more compression because we have more gain reduction. This is the gain reduction meter and we are reducing around 5-6 dBs. Here we are not reducing anything. And here we have so much more compression. That's a lot of compression actually. Okay, so we want a moderate compression to look for the peaks. I think that's pretty pretty good. Sometimes, uh, I don't know, maybe three, four dBs of gain reduction is a good starting point. So, well, let's keep it. The next point is to do, uh, we have to set our attack and release. Now, let's hear the attack effect. A fast attack, okay, and a slow one. So we have the sound has more attack here and less attack here. So this is a matter of taste, which one is better for our sound. I want my kick drum with attack, but not too much, so maybe something like this is okay, which was around 50 milliseconds. It's usual for kick drums to, to be around 50, 60, I don't know. Something like that is okay in many situations. Now, the release. Look, if we set a very fast release, we will have more punch. If we set a slow release, we'll have uh, more control more controlled sound, more punch, less control, a duller sound. So it's a matter of taste. I want a punchier sound, but with control, of course, maybe something like this. And finally, we have to adjust the makeup gain. Here, the roll of thumb is that if I'm reducing around 2 or 3 dBs, I have to make up 2 or 3 dBs. And now we can compare 
with our bypass without compression and with compression. Let's hear without compression. There you go. I hope you can hear the difference with the punch. It has more solid sound. Okay. There you go. And our, compre uh, our compressor is working. Uh, our compressor is working here only with the peaks, which is what we usually want for a kick drum. Uh, remember, this can change if I have a different uh, kick drum sound, a different drummer, or a different microphone position. So we have to, we cannot say that this is a universal technique for every kick drum in the world. No, this is the basics, but you have to do it by yourself experimenting and, and finally you can make adjustments it, you, you can you freely can do that I mean you can compress a little bit more maybe adjust the attack the release and do it uh, a couple of times until you polish your sound but this is pretty much the basics and the foundations for a good compressor setting okay bye bye